Hey guys, welcome back to another session by Scalar. So this session is about AWS Basics. So we're going to do a series of AWS Basics where we'll be understanding the basic concepts in AWS and also how to do demos in that particular topics. So in this particular session, we have taken AWS S3 and AWS S3 will be looking into various concepts. So we'll be looking into how to create a bucket, how to create an object, how to make it public and various concepts within AWS S3. So it'll be a short and crisp session where it will be just understanding and how to create all of these simple hands-ons. And uh, before we move on, please make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss our upcoming videos and also not to miss upcoming videos of this particular series. And also, if you enjoy our content, leave a like. And if you have any queries, leave a comment down below and we would be addressing all of your questions. Now, without any further delay, let's begin. So guys, as I told you, this is going to be a session which is very straightforward. We'll just be looking at the demos and that's it. So there will be more videos coming up I'll be showing you how to create an EC2 instance, how to create an RDS database, how to create a Redshift uh, data warehouse, how to basically create an Elastic Beanstalk application, how to create a Lambda function. So all of this will be taught, but all of this will be up to the point. I'll be just showing you how to do them. I wouldn't be explaining anything about S3 or uh, anything about whatever service I'm going to show you the demo about. So again, if you want to know more in depth, we already have tutorials on our website. I already have a created S3 tutorial. You can go check out everything over there. But if you just want to know how to create a bucket and upload objects, this is the place uh, you need to be. So right now, let's get started with it and let's go with it. Okay, so S3, I'm opening the service. Okay, so here you can see there is already one bucket which is available, but this bucket is uh, created when uh, we create an Elastic Beanstalk uh, application. So this got created at that particular point of time. But again, I don't need this. So anyway, let it be. So now to create a bucket, it's very, very simple. Just open the S3 website, S3 console. So s3.console.aws or amazon.com. So once you open this, you can just click on create bucket. Click on that. And your bucket's name should be globally unique. Globally unique in the sense nobody in the world should have the same bucket name. Because S3 is a global service. See, you can't basically select the region which you are creating it in. You can select it here, but it doesn't matter. It will be created in this region, but the name of the bucket should be globally unique. Otherwise, it wouldn't let you. For example, let me say AWS bucket. Okay, I'm giving it AWS bucket. That is uh, that is the name of the bucket and uh, let it be disabled okay everything is there now i'm creating bucket now it's saying bucket with the same name already exists so that basically means somebody already has created a bucket named aws bucket so i'm just going to do one thing i'm just going to type scalar youtube okay scalar youtube bucket let's see if there is a bucket named this if there is no bucket named that it will automatically create the bucket for me Yes, so it's creating the bucket. So that's it. That's how simple it is to create an S3 bucket. Understood? So that's it, guys. You don't have to do anything else, anything else. You just have to log in into your console, open S3, and click on create bucket, provide the name, and choose the region and click create the bucket. Simple as that. And then click on the bucket. You can start adding objects to the bucket right now. So you can click on upload. And then you can either add files or you can add complete folders from your local system. So clicking on add files will open the file explorer like this, right? You can just choose anything you want and upload it. Yeah, let me choose this container image and click on upload. Okay, so I can choose more files. So I can choose uh, like this, I can choose like this, like I can choose multiple files at the same time. If not, I can just choose one file okay uh, that doesn't matter uh, you can choose any file you want okay so i'm just going to choose these two files also index and error.html and upload them so you can upload multiple files at the same time all right and i'm clicking on upload over here you will see how long it took to upload these files and upload is done so yeah so three files are uploaded it basically shows it succeeded total uh, size was 15.4 kb including all of these three files okay 
this information will no longer be available after you navigate away from this page so this is just to show you that if it's successfully uploaded or not so once you close this that info will not be there and here you will be given the information what type of a file it is so it's a png type it's a html type uh, so if it is a pdf type it will be showing that so what are the type of files it is and then when it was uploaded uh, so basically the time as well so i am in the uh, indian region so it is giving me the utc plus 530 yeah so utc plus 530 that basically means i'm from india so i'll have to just add 530 to it and that would be my current time okay no actually this is the time which has been added uh, with utc plus 530 it's not the utc time it's the current time because i checked the time here that's the time given over here okay then what else yeah so then you can just select it and you can uh, delete the files if you want to so there is copy you can copy it into another s3 bucket you can delete the file you can rename the uh, this particular name uh, you can edit metadata metadata will give you more insider info about the object so right now there is only one metadata that is the image value is a png so you can add something else also if you want you can edit the metadata according to your needs and one more thing so you can basically share let's say you have an s3 bucket and you have like uh, 20 objects in it and you want to share one particular object so it's a bad practice to share the access to the entire bucket right so instead you can just share access to that particular object so let me copy the url of this particular object and paste it here but it would not work now so you can see right access is denied because this object is not public so what you can do is you can select you can go over here so make public using acl is available here but we don't have to do that we can make it uh, public by also providing it public access so over here so this is again one more uh, property settings and there is permissions in permissions you can see they have blocked all public access right so you can make you can basically provide read access to if i edit this say so block public access to buckets and objects granted through new access control lists block public access to buckets and granted through any access control list so i want to provide public access new public bucket or access point policies i don't want this uh, this i don't want so i'm going to change uh, save changes done so now let me go back again to objects select this so this one is within s3 you can see this right this one is within s3 this one is the complete url so now this file uh, we've allowed public access we can basically edit public access to it so now i'm going to go to access control list let's see if we can do it so i'm going to remove all of this and save changes Okay, so now objects can be public. Go to objects, select an object. Um, okay, it's slow. Let me just try this again. So it can be public, but it's not public yet. Now let's go back. Now select the bucket. Sorry, click on the bucket. So now the bucket can be public as well, right? So the bucket is public, but the objects are not. Yeah, so we basically made this public access right so one more thing we'll have to do is coming down so the object ownership is basically a bucket owner enforced that basically means what i decide i can just add that to the policy here and that will work so if you want anybody to do it so you can create an a, uh, acl so i'm going to enable an acl so I acknowledge that acls will be restored so bucket owner preferred object writer so it could be either the bucket owner can fully create the ACL and control it or it could be owned by the object trader that is the person who uploads the object to the bucket will have the rights to create the ACL okay so I'm just going to keep it bucket owner preferred and save changes oh sorry I had to enable this save changes done so now coming down now I can edit this so I can make everyone public access I can do this but I don't want to do this. I don't want to make all of my objects public. I just want to make one object that is this object public. So I'm going to make it public. Make public. Done. 
okay so this particular object is public but this is not public let me copy this url and paste it here so you can't see this right but this object this is the container png's url so i'm going to refresh this and you can see the image because this particular object is public and this object is not these two objects are not public this object container.png is public so let's say i can make again one more object public so i'm just making this public close now i can copy this again this is the html page and it's showing over here so uh, basically you can make objects public like this you can remove public access as well so if you want to give all of your objects public access then just you can just go to permissions go to acls click on edit and click on everyone public access to list and read so nobody can write they can list and read it okay so that's what they can do or you can provide access to only people who have authenticated access to the iam group you can provide that and again provide here and then you can save it and that changes would be saved so this is how you can start working with your objects and if you're going to upload objects of the same name then make sure you enable bucket versioning so if you don't enable bucket versioning what will happen is i'll show you that over here let's say i'll upload the container.png file once again container.png i'm uploading it again so what do you think will happen will this overwrite the existing file or will it create another file so what do you think will happen please tell me now so just you will have an answer in mind right so now let's see so now it basically overwrote the file it did not create a new file so if i click on this let's see if this object is available for the public so it is not public yet okay so that basically means it's a new file which got uploaded this is the object url so it's not public because i overwrote it but what if i want to upload another object of the same name but i don't want overwriting to happen i want another object to be created so that you can enable bucket versioning so now if i go to objects now let me upload it once again upload close and now you can see still there is a new file which got updated but you have this new option called show versions if i click on this it will show all the versions of the same file the latest version would be the main file the older version there is a file which got uploaded before would be under the file that is it will be an older version so you can still delete individual versions also that is no problem so you can upload more files uh, so this was basically the session guys uh, i hope it was up to the point and taught you how to create a bucket how to upload objects how to make them public how to enable versioning so these are all the things which i wanted to show you guys so i hope it was helpful meet you in another session like this